07 everybody. We're going to do a uh, quick video of setting up console controls for War Thunder simulation. I'm using an Xbox controller, uh, but these will work equally well for a PlayStation controller if that's what you have. So the first thing we're going to do is head into the controls menu and go to control setup wizard. And we're going to go to the controller layout and actually drive it to keyboard and mouse only advanced. Uh, that's actually going to give us like 90% of the buttons that we need and make it really easy to uh, flip flop back and forth between flying and tanking in case you're going to like play sim ground or something like that and flip flop between aircraft and ground. So all the tank controls and things that you need will be in here uh, binded in ways that you're probably accustomed to. Once you're in this menu, you can go ahead and just pop into full real controls, go to controls mode, mouse joystick, take that off, we'll put it on view, or you can put it on none, whichever you prefer. You leave it on view if you like. Uh, toggle SAS mode, don't really need it, uh, but you could just put it as uh, control S or something like that because it will ask you to bind it when you leave the menu. Uh, the small caliber guns, we're going to put the small caliber guns as a right bumper, and the large caliber guns as a right bumper. We're going to put open bomb bay doors as X and up. We're going to put drop bomb as X and down. We're going to put fire rocket as left bumper, and that pretty much takes care of most of the weapons. I am setting this up for World War II era aircraft, but if you want to do jets and get missiles and stuff like that, there should be plenty of real estate left over on your controller, or you can uh, you know, change the bindings up as you see fit, maybe make a couple of sacrifices like scoreboards or something like that, and uh, you can make it work. Uh, we're going to scroll on down now to the uh, mouse wheel. I'd like to leave it on throttle axis, but you can change it to something else if you like. Uh, throttle axis right here, we're going to set that as auto detect, and we're going to drive the right stick forward and backwards. And we're going to enable that axis with the left stick pushing in. And I like to drop that relative control sensitivity down just a notch, make it a little bit easier to be accurate. On the roll axis, we're going to auto detect and move the left stick left and right to make sure we see left thumb horizontal there. And on linear E of 2, don't be afraid to play with this. Uh, I, I leave it on 2. 2 works pretty good for me, but uh, you know, different people with different dexterities like different uh, values, so don't be too afraid of that. Uh, that says it's already set to the throttle axis, which means I did the throttle axis wrong, so we're going to... Yeah, I got it on the horizontal stick. I needed to say right thumb vertical. Got it now. Uh, pitch axis here, we're going to auto detect and move our left stick forward and backward. And again, nonlinearity of two, I, I like to leave that alone. Yaw axis, where instead of auto detecting, we're going to drop from this choose down menu here and uh, choose from this drop down menu here. We're going to get this right plus left trigger option. And then I like to drive this nonlinearity up to like three, but again, find the value that works best for you. Uh, once we're done with that, we can move on to mechanization. Toggle flaps as the A key. Toggle gear as left trigger plus right trigger plus X plus A all simultaneously. Left brake, we're going to set the maximum value of the left brake on the left trigger and maximum value of the right brake on the right trigger. So when you go left rudder, you'll also go left brake. And when you go right rudder, you'll also go right brake. And if you do both at the same time, you'll do both brakes. Camera control, we're going to go toggle view onto the Y button. And then gunner view, I like to, if you have mouse and keyboard, I like to make that right click so that you can uh, grab your mouse, hit right click, and then left click to instantly start firing at people while you're still flying around with the left stick here. So you can kind of defensively fly while you try to gun people down behind you. Um, then we're going to go to the zoom axis air. We're going to auto detect and make it the right stick going up and down the vertical axis. And then we're going to drive this correction value down to negative 50%. You'll see why when we get into the game. View and battle x-axis. We're just going to hit auto detect and move the right stick right and left. Make sure it says horizontal there. And view and battle y-axis. Auto detect. We're going to go forward and backwards. Make sure it says vertical there. Uh, we also want to drive those multipliers up to 1. Uh, we're going to add that. And then go to the x-axis and drive that multiplier up to 1 as well. Perfect. Uh, also, we need to set these as relative controls. No. So go back to the x-axis view battle and view and battle y-axis and set those relative controls on no. So that way it'll actually return to center when you stop pressing it. Um, if you do like relative control, you can flip-flop it however you like, but I think most people would prefer it on no. 
head movement upwards, downwards, double click on that, and we're going to go maximum value, right stick, push in. And we're going to go enable axis and disable, we're going to delete that enable axis key. Uh, trimming, we're going to go trimmer's fixation, left bumper plus right bumper together. Elevator trim axis, we're going to go increase value is down D-pad, decrease value is up D-pad, and then we're going to go relative control step on 1%. And we're going to go aileron trim axis, we're going to go increase value uh, is x plus right d-pad, decrease value is x plus left d-pad, and relative control step on 1%. Rudder trim axis is going to be increase value right d-pad, decrease value left d-pad. So the rudder trim is going to be left and right, the aileron trim is going to be x plus left and right. Reason being is Pretty much every aircraft that has rudder trim also has aileron trim, but not every aircraft that has, uh, I'm sorry, pretty much every aircraft that has aileron trim also has rudder trim, but not vice versa. So you're much more likely to have only rudder trim instead of only aileron trim. So it's a little bit more uh, prudent to put the rudder and the elevator as the primary functions on the D-pad and then the aileron as the secondary function because you're less likely to have that aileron. Uh, toggle engine, I like to take that off the I key and make it Alt plus I so you don't accidentally turn off your engine while you're typing. And then go for the controller setting, we're going to go left trigger plus right trigger plus left stick plus right stick. So all four of those together will start your engine in case you don't have mouse and keyboard there. I'm not going to get into the manual engine controls. You guys can do whatever you want with your manual engine controls. I do recommend dabbling into that. If you guys got any uh, questions, uh, maybe I can make another video about that another time. Uh, we need to go into the helicopter mode, not because it's important, but because they're going to bug us about not having air to ground bound if we don't do it, and about not having this silly mess bound if we don't do it. So that's a little annoying. This is the x-axis. We'll go right and left. This is the y-axis. We'll go up and down. They like remind you every time you exit out of the menu if you don't find those three things. Uh, then we're going to head on over to common, where we can put the tactical map as the B button, statistics as the select button, we can do the view control zoom camera as the X button and also the right mouse button. And then quick message number one, follow me. We're going to go left stick plus X. And quick message number two, cover me is left stick plus Y. And I think that pretty much covers it. Let's go ahead and test out these controls in a mission and see how they fly. Make sure I didn't miss anything. And we'll do a quick demonstration of the controls. All right, so we can change our view with the Y button here. We can also uh, roll around with the mouse because we put it on view setting. The nice thing about the mouse is if you let go of it, it'll stay there versus the controller where if you look that way and you let go of it, it'll return to center. So you have two different ways to view. Now we're ready to start the uh, engines. We're going to go ahead and hold left trigger plus right trigger plus left stick plus right stick and that'll start up the engine there. And you notice when we go into the uh, cockpit view that the aircraft zooms out slowly to the maximum field of view. That's that negative 50% corrector value that, that we put on this right stick that's just happening automatically in the background so you don't even have to think about it. Now using the, hold on a second, let me, controls, common, view, that's on 15%. Uh, let's try driving that smoothness up a little bit and see how that plays. Oh yeah. That feels pretty good. So play with uh, the gamepad acceleration and the camera smoothness until you can look around uh, pretty speedily without getting disoriented, and it might be different values for you than it is for me. We're going to go ahead, and in order to increase our throttle, we're going to hold the left stick, which will undo that zoom temporarily, and then we can move our throttle down and up. If we're not holding the left stick, moving the right stick down and up will just increase our y-axis, increase or decrease our y-axis there. But when we hold that left stick, that'll actually adjust our throttle up and down instead of the um, instead of the view axis. So we can drive that throttle 
up to departure uh, settings, and then we're using a little bit of uh, oh, we missed one thing. Controls. Go back to your main control axis. So you see when I when I let go of that stick, the left stick, it says throttle 98%, and then I let go, and it says throttle 0%, right? That's because it's not keeping the value of the disabled axis. That's one thing I forgot. So that's why we test it. We're going to go back into controls, main control axes, throttle axes, right here. Keep value for disabled axis. Flip that to yes. Uh, and then we're just going to add it. Right, and now, even though I'm not holding that left stick, the throttle will go to uh, the setting that I left it on and stay there. Right, so we're going to go ahead and drop our flaps. Now we're going to raise our gear by holding the left trigger, right trigger, plus X and A all together. Now we're going to tap A to raise our flaps, and we can just tap X again to zoom out like that. Now we're flying. Uh, the B key will open up our map. The X key will toggle our zoom. The A key will toggle our flaps. The right stick will raise our head level so that we can do some deflection shooting in case there's a, a target at a, you know, a high angle off attack, you know, kind of slicing across us and you've got to throw the rounds out in front of him to meet him. Uh, you might have to pull real, real hard and you might not be able to see the target hidden behind your sight down here, but if you're able to pop your head up over your sight, you might be able to catch a little glimpse of them and track your target uh, a little bit more accurately to keep your gun solution, and if they've taken evasive action, you can match them and try to stay one step ahead. Now, again, I really want you guys to play around with the non-linearity and get to a place where you can, uh, you know, find some smoothness um, but also get those aggressive maneuvers in there where, where you need it. I use two for the pitch and roll, but I use three for the yaw, and it may be different for you. And, uh, and, and don't be married to the number just because it's what I use. I, I definitely am not married to it, and I uh, change it all the time. Sometimes I'll change it based on the aircraft that I'm in. Um, let me see, where did we leave off? We need the uh, right stick as the head up. We already did that. Uh, throttle on the left stick push in uh, the the, uh, the calm controls that that's right okay so follow me and cover me are two extremely important communication controls in simulation uh, they will both report your position to your team as well as your altitude and that's huge information for your team and judicious use of follow me and cover me in simulator battles is is a must to ensure that you're working well with your team and uh, letting them know what's going on to help mitigate that fog of war and keep everybody as much on the same page as you can. Follow me is really useful uh, in a couple of occasions. I use follow me anytime I score a kill. If I kill an enemy aircraft, you'll almost always hear me say follow me right after that. So that way if you see my name in the kill feed, you can see Wingling Dragon killed so and so, and then you'll hear me say follow me. And then you can open up the map and you can see where I am and what altitude I'm at, and then you can know that over there, I just killed somebody. Over there, some kind of action just went down. I don't necessarily need any help, but if you saw two dots over there battling, and then you saw me kill one of them, uh, and then you, you know, and you're like, ah, I, that might be him. Well, if I say follow me, now you know for a fact it's me. Uh, another time I use follow me is anytime an ally says attention to the map, they are pointing out a bogey, an unidentified bogey. They're not sure if it's friend or foe, but they see an aircraft, and they're going to click on where they think it is on the map. And they're not 100% accurate with it, so if you see uh, an attention to the map appear in your vicinity, make sure you hit follow me. And you can do that with your left stick and X. Now, I'm in test flight, so you're not going to hear him say follow me, but if we were in a real match, he would, uh, he would do a quick follow me command, and we'd be good to go. Um, and if your ally is about getting ready to dive on somebody, and he calls you out, and you respond to him, follow me, now he knows you're friendly, and he's not going to waste his time or effort or energy coming down just to find out that you were actually a friendly the entire time. Uh, cover me is a little bit controversial. Um, not everyone agrees with me, but I tend to teach all the pilots that I uh, talk to 
that cover me is used not necessarily when you're in a position of disadvantage, which, you know, some people would argue it's only for if you actually need help. Um, I use cover me anytime I see a bogey that I am able to close on and then confirm whether or not it is a friend or foe. And once I find out that it's a foe, and I know for a fact it's an enemy that needs, uh, needs to be addressed, I will say cover me. And that does two things. It, uh, it tells the team where I'm at and gets them heading my direction, and it lets them know that I for sure 100% have an enemy at that location with me. Now, even if I'm diving on that enemy and I'm getting ready to blast him out of the sky with my cannons and I'm like 99.99% per sure, cent per sure, cent per percent sure that he is going to die, um, I'll still say cover me because there's still a small chance that I might botch the attack, I might miss my shot, he might take a sudden evasive action that I wasn't predicting, and I might, I might lose that advantage, and I might end up like kind of in a pickle. And if I say cover me nice and early, hopefully my teammate starts heading out to that area and I can, you know, get some backup nice and early. Uh, but even if your attack is successful and you do blast the guy out of the sky, that's all well and good, but as soon as those first tracers went past the guy's cockpit, he's going to start screaming for cover too, and his teammates are going to start heading out to that area. And if you don't rally your teammates to do the same thing, you're going to find yourself outnumbered more often than not. So if you find an enemy, you can pretty much be guaranteed as soon as he sees you, he's going to call for cover. You should call for cover too. If everybody starts heading to that area, we can get a nice fight going, a real nice furball. And that's just a lot of fun for everybody. It's just a win-win all the way around. So when you see an enemy, hit cover me. Um, so that is follow me and cover me. Uh, follow me is going to be on the left stick plus X. And cover me is going to be on the left stick plus Y and that'll do uh, cover me, both of which will give you know your position and altitude, but the cover me puts up a little shield. Um, beyond that, we've got the bomb release. So uh, using the X key plus up will open up your bomb bay doors if you have them. Using the X key plus down will drop your bomb if you have it. And it's, uh, it's a single bomb release or a, you know, a small salvo bomb release uh, it's not a bomb series where it'll release all your bombs, so you can be a little bit precise with it. Um, <coughs> and I think that pretty much covers most of the controls. I'm trying to think if there's anything left over. I mean, we talked about the main guns, right? Right bumper is your small and large calibers here. And you can fire them even while you're looking up and over your sight. And you can see the difference in how much, how much you can see below the tracers with your head movement upwards and downwards. So that head movement upwards is nice because you can hold that while you're sitting there maneuvering on somebody. And you can still get good shots in. 